Hello vinyl community! I have not done this for quite a while, a vinyl oriented video, so let's exercise some English. The summer is almost over here and I've been listening to a lot of music during the summer, some of it even summer related. So um, let's start. Um, I want to dedicate the following round exclusively to albums and records from Japan. And I want to begin with one of my favorite, which is uh, Masayoshi Takanaka. Now Takanaka is a guitar player and was the guitarist from the Sadistic Mika band in the early 70s, which was a rather cool jazz rock, psychedelic rock group, and uh, later became a member of the follow-up band, the Sadistics, which I always really enjoyed for their funky, uh, jazzy sound. And this is uh, Seychelles from the year 1976, which was his first solo album and uh, started a whole, a whole um, chain of records, of solo records, all dedicated basically to surf rock. But it's not only surf rock, there, is, there are elements of, uh, of Latin music, a lot of uh, funky jazz sounds, etc. Mostly instrumental. Uh, this is really some great stuff you can get lost in uh, very, very, uh, uh, very moody music, uh, obviously with a touch of exotica and the yearning for uh, distant shores and beaches. Um, his third record was a nameless one, only called Takanaka. Um, here you can see him with the Fender Stratocaster, which seems to be the go-to instrument for all uh, surf rock musicians. <laughs> and uh, another great album by Takanaka is Jolie Jive. This was his last record in the 70s, in 1979. Uh, quite an uh, excellent one. Uh, so he was very productive in those years. Um, this is uh, Alone. This one he did probably 1981, I think. Um, and um, there are still a whole bunch of records by Takanaka that I'm looking for. Um, but um, sometimes you need some really serious coin on the table to get hold of those. So uh, this is uh, quite an expensive rabbit hole. And uh, this is not something I can do all the time. Um, the next artist is Tatsu Yamashita. Now Tatsuro Yamashita is a very famous producer and uh, singer and musician. Um, he um, recorded this album as a soundtrack. So th there is a movie that's called Big Wave. I have not seen that movie and uh, it's probably kind of a forgotten flick, but uh, the music remains. And uh, this is, of course, uh, very, I mean, the cover tells it all. This is surf rock, very inspired by the 60s, by the Beach Boys, and um, very uplifting music, so to speak. Um, great recording, great sound, wonderful refrains and ideas and vocals. Um, it's overall a very uh, happy and satisfying album. Um, the way it is structured is quite interesting, because, because the A-side covers compositions by... Yamashita, but the B-side is basically cover versions, with the exception of the last track, uh, cover versions by cover version of songs by Brian Wilson and one by Harry Nielsen. So um, it's an interesting mixture and uh, quite a cool album. Yes, and I mean Yamashita was one of the three guys that did the famous Pacific album together with uh, Sugeru Suzuki and Haruomi Hosono, of course, uh, which is a fine example of 70s exotica music from Japan, and certainly one that I really like. Yeah, another rather big name from this time period is Takeshi Tereuchi. Um, this is also a surf rock artist, but much heavy, much more uh, much heavier in the world of rockabilly. It's, it's a quite a good example of uh, the influence, I think, the influence that uh, the the visit of the Ventures had on 
Japan and Japanese mu musicians in the 60s. The Ventures came to Japan in 1962 and they were this fierce uh, surf rock rockabilly instrumental band and um, it's quite fascinating how this influenced all the youngsters in Japan and quite uh, had quite an impact on uh, the sound that all the bands in the following years started to make and uh, I mean surf rock and rockabilly is something deeply ingrained into the Japanese pop music of the 60s and 70s certainly and uh, Terauchi is no exception um, I mean four, four years later in 1966 the Beatles came and played the Budokan but I would say this had by far not have had this kind of impact on uh, young musicians in Japan compared with the Ventures uh, I think the, the Budokan concert by the Beatles was more like this mayhem that left, that left a lot of people confused. <laughs> but uh, the Ventures were really impactful on, uh, on uh, the direction that uh, young bands were taking in the following years. Now, um, Terauchi has recorded dozens and dozens of albums. Um, I'm pretty sure somewhere in the vinyl community, community there's someone who has all his records. Um, I would not even dare to go in that direction. Well, talking about Sadistic Mika band and the Sadistics, this guy was also in the band as a drummer. Uh, this is, of course, uh, Yukihiro Takahashi. And his uh, late 80s album Tomorrow's Just Another Day. Um, I mean, leave it, to, leave it to Takahashi to use a completely failed blurry photograph as a motive for, your, for the cover of your album. Um, well, it's certainly something you don't see every day. I mean, the photo is really, really not good. But I guess that's kind of an intention. Um, but uh, I guess not everybody would get away with that. Now let's get to some female vocals. Um, this is uh, Yasuko Lovebird and her album Sunglow. Uh, so these, those are the very early days of J-pop around 1980-81. Uh, so very smooth music, uh, very uh, slightly uh, pop music spiced with nice jazz chords and tunes. And uh, this is her album Journey. So this, these records are all in wonderful condition, I have to say. Uh, this one uh, came out on Invitation. Uh, now, uh, this is here uh, Junko Ohashi and her album Flush. So, uh, this is another great example of early 80s J pop. Uh, and uh, here is something completely different. That's some more Japanese sound from the 90s, uh, Child's View, an album by Nobukazu Takemura. Uh, this is a very, very jazzy, uh, sort of a down-tempo record, uh, somewhere between, uh, yeah, well, sort of a club, jazzy club sound. Uh, very laid back, very, very relaxed, and uh, at the same time very intriguing. I like this record. And uh, finally, the last record for that session is one of, actually one of my favorite albums uh, from uh, the Japanese 70s, uh, which would be uh, Benzai Ten by Osamu Kitajima. And this is a fascinating record. This is really a milestone, a seminal, seminal uh, album that uh, you can really listen all the time it never gets old um, I mean he did he did that I think 1976 yeah uh, so this is a very sort of a psychedelic uh, fourth world uh, record um, of course the term fourth world coined by John Hassel didn't exist in that context but if I had to file it under something I would probably file it under fourth world um, so this is a fascinating mixture of uh, folk themes and folk tunes, Japanese folk tunes, 
uh, very traditional music, but uh, have heavily adapted into this uh, psychedelic genre. And um, yeah, probably the kind of music that uh, a lot of stoners would prefer. And I can imagine in the course of history, a lot of joints have been lit up to exactly that record. <laughs> and rightly so. Um, just um, out of interest, um, Haruo Mihosono is playing on this one, bass guitar. Um, but then again, uh, when there was an interesting project in the 70s in Japan, Haruo Mihosono was probably somewhere next door, as usual. So um, that's it for the moment, and um, see you next time. <laughs>